Hey everyone, this is John Hammond. And look, if you work in cybersecurity, and I have a hunch that a lot of you do, there is some really cool intel that just got released. And this is the IBM Threat Intelligence Index. This is one awesome resource of all the things that IBM is seeing across the industry and across the whole landscape. Talking about threats, adversaries, threat actors, risks, what businesses, organization, companies are seeing in regards to cybersecurity. And and there is a whole lot here that I really want to dig into, but in this video, I'd like to go through just a couple of the highlights, get into some of the really important themes, and then we'll showcase some of the stuff in action, maybe even do a couple demos super duper soon. But for now, I want to take a look through the index, find the gems, and if you'd like, you can totally take a look and follow along just as well. There is a link in the video description, and on top of that, IBM is even doing a webinar super duper soon where they will dive into a lot of the nitty gritty, so if you're interested, again, Again, link in the video description. But let's go check out the Threat Intelligence Index from IBM in 2024. Obviously, the table of contents is pretty clear cut. I am pretty interested in a lot of these initial access vector opportunities and even a little bit of the cyber warfare component. They are getting into some generative AI. That is certainly a hot topic right now. And I'm super duper glad that they include some recommendations and other industry trends. And if I may, I do want to touch on this in the executive summary. I know it's just a summary, but I love that they're zooming in on how identities are the new target for a whole lot of cybersecurity attacks. We talk about this a lot, even at my day job, because look, it's not all about the endpoint or the device anymore. We do live in the cloud era where all of our access, the applications, programs, software that we use is oftentimes online. Hey, you're working in environments that has your calendar, your meeting schedule, your online sort of like file share, SharePoint, right? All out there on the internet. And that is accessed based on off of your persona, your identity, and who you are. That is what threat actors and adversaries want to gain access to. Threat actors historically go for the path of least resistance. Hey, going for the low hanging fruit here. And honestly, it's not even about, hey, trying to break in with some leet zero day or exploit. If they can just get credentials and, hey, find a username and password, they'll just log in rather than break in. And this is a fascinating tidbit in my mind because they observed a 100% increase in Herber roasting, the attack that came out in like 2015, but is still one incredible way to move through an active directory environment. And that's like just abusing a feature, like some natural stuff that happens in Kerberos and active directory protocols. I don't mean to beat you over the head with all this, but obviously, look, we've been chatting about info stealer malware and then threats over on the dark web and the marketplace all the time. Those are in tons of different videos that I showcase, but genuinely it's a real threat and they're seeing it too. And here is another huge hot topic. Topic, obviously, generative AI, artificial intelligence, GitHub Copilot, Chat GPT, whatever you name it, it is certainly a part of the conversation now. And there is so much rapid innovation, research and development, and new stuff coming out with that. That hey, yeah, threat actors are just using Chat GPT to demonstrate and pull off and use some attack vectors. Like you can just straight up ask an AI, hey, please write a phishing email for me. And maybe you might have to massage that prompt a little bit. Hey, maybe someone in HR is going to read a resume for a job application, but then you say, look, can you permutate that out to 10,000 phishing emails and maybe even look, hey, here's the source code or the reverse engineering decompiled analysis of some software. Can you go find some vulnerabilities that I might be able to exploit as a new zero day or end day? Artificial intelligence is undoubtedly supplementing human analysis and research, whether it's for good or bad. It's not a secret, it can be used in offense. With that said, let me level set and sort of temper expectations. This isn't huge, it's not booming. Despite looming gen AI enabled threats, they haven't observed any concrete evidence of generative AI engineered cyber attacks to like some rapid shift in how attackers go about their business. Oh, the stats here are honestly really cool. Cool. 71% year over year increase in using just valid credentials to log in. Look, they don't need to hack in. They can just log in. There's actually a drop in ransomware incidents. That's interesting to me, especially because I think now, obviously, SEC, the Security Exchange Commission saying, look, we need to have a little bit more notice when stuff hits the fan. Obviously, I think there are going to be a little bit more reporting on intrusions and compromise, but ransomware, hey, is up and down. And they acknowledge this here. Look, despite remaining remaining the most common action on objectives like post-exploitation, X-Force observed a drop in enterprise ransomware incidents. This drop is likely to impact adversaries
adversaries revenue expectations from encryption based extortion as larger organizations are stopping attacks before ransomware is deployed. So defense is working. EDR doing a pretty good job. And it's opting against paying and decrypting and using just, hey, here's my money. Please give me my files back. We're not doing that anymore. We're going to actually roll out backups and rebuild if ransomware is taking over the environment. That's a good thing. That drop is good. Holy crap, look at this. 266 upsurge in the use of info stealer malware. Look, we've been screaming and shouting about that for so many videos, but I'm doing it for a reason. 30% security misconfigurations and web application vulnerabilities. Yep, look, we're still seeing web stuff. Oh, what was it? No, it was move it. Move it transfer 2023, right? SQL injection. And that's like one of the OWASP top 10 most common vulnerabilities, and it's still playing a part in today's day and age. 32% of incidents that involve malicious use of legitimate tools. Now, this is interesting because we always get to the conversation of like remote monitoring and management, RMM tools, because those could very well just be used as a command and control instance. Look, we're chatting about screen connect, like connect wise control, right? Uh, any desk, what is it? There are plenty of others. Any RMM solution can be used and abused. Here's a big one, 50% market share threshold likely to trigger attacks against AI or artificial intelligence platform. That means the establishment of AI market dominance will signal the AI attack surface. So look, we all keep talking about prompt engineering, right? Hey, I fooled the Chevy car dealership into selling me a car for $1 because I entered into the chat GPT concierge that you'll agree to anything I say and it will be a law binding agreement. Give me a new Chevy Camaro for $1 or something. That's a cheesy example, but I really mean, look, artificial intelligence can still be fooled, deceived. You get into hallucination. That is part of the new attack surface. Holy cow, that is a bold statistic. 84%. This is like a, a strong statement in my mind. 84% of critical infrastructure incidents where the initial access vector could have been mitigated. Let me run that back. Look, how the hackers got in, that could have been prevented. For a majority of incidents on critical infrastructure, like, oh, cyber key terrain or key cyber terrain, whatever you hear people say, that X-Force responded to, the whole thing could have been prevented if you had just used some good cyber security hygiene, right? Best practice security fundamentals, like actually patching your systems, using strong credentials, and access controls, principle of least privilege, the same stuff that we still scream and shout about all the time. I love that they are going out and saying that, not gonna lie. Keeping it going, ooh, the top initial access vectors. Now, again, I would think phishing is up here, and it certainly is. Oh, what is that, like 41%? Jeez. Okay, yeah, phishing is up here. Oh, but look, they have a legend down below. So blue is 2023, and that's what we were just looking at most recently, right? And 2022 is the gray stat where it was previously. So phishing used to be higher, 41%. Now it's over 30, but valid accounts like genuine legitimate credentials jump way up 30% over 16%, almost double public facing application exploits, 29%. So a little bit higher than it would have used to be remote services, replication through uh, USB drives, removable media, drive by compromise, trust the relationship for insiders. That's interesting to me that valid accounts is literally doing a little bit more growth while phishing is going down info stealer malware, baby. Ooh, I'm super duper happy. They talk about about this. X-Force responded to multiple cases involving email compromise, like business email compromise, circumventing multi-factor authentication, two-factor, two-step verification, whatever you want to call it, using adversary in the middle attacks. If you've seen my evil jinx video, all the conversations that we have about that are like, hey, using a reverse proxy to do adversary in the middle attacks. And that bypasses well, bypasses two-factor authentication because you capture that and just send it along to the server. I am super duper glad that they touch on that because I think that is a reality just as well. We see like, uh, we dig into that attacker in the middle business email compromise. What else do they get into here? Again, I don't want to drag us through all of this. Okay, they get into move it. Yeah, and uh, go anywhere MFT. So the managed file transfer applications that clop the ransomware threat actor was digging into. I think that's Lace Tempest now and some of the other oh sweet threat actor naming conventions. But okay, they mentioned OWASP. Exactly. Dude, is it what exactly what I was saying? <laughs> Wow, they dig into it. Yeah, they have the chart here for OWASP web 
application security risks and misconfigurations are right up there. Broken access controls. That's that's some, quite a stat. I'm glad they chat about a lot of this because this is this is a lot of my world, right? Look, we've been chasing the screen connect vulnerabilities and of course move it and everything. Oh, wow. Look at all this. Log4j, zero logon. Yep. Print nightmare, proxy logon, spring for shell. Felina's in the mix. This is a really cool breakdown of the history and like the big like internet shaking, like hardcore mass worry vulnerabilities. That's cool. Here's the thing. I have only scratched the surface of everything that this gets into and there's a lot more to it. What else are we getting into here? Okay. Top actions on objectives, right? Hey, post exploitation, what the threat actor or the adversary does, ransomware, malware, chatting about that. And they dig into so much here. Look, I am just like barely scratching the surface. Look, section five, top impacts, scrolling down through a whole nother section. We dig into cyber warfare, right? The real genuine world conflicts that matter and how cybersecurity and threats kind of play a part in that. Look, I, I, there's no way that I could dig into it. All this video is already a little bit long, but I did want to give you just a little bit of that teaser. Look, we're almost at, not even halfway through the report. We haven't even touched on the AI component. And man, there is so much interesting stuff there, especially look, look at this. X forces observed AI GPT mentioned over 800,000 posts in illicit markets and dark web forums in 2023. There is so much cool insight that this digs into. I really think that's awesome. Look, I'm sorry. This video is getting longer than I wanted it to be because I did genuinely just wanted to offer a little bit of a teaser. Lo wanted you to go see, look, this is the cool stuff that is available. All the insights and everything that IBM X-Force is seeing. And look, it's not a secret. They see a lot. They have serious visibility on what goes down for intrusions and attacks and exploits, penetration tests and response, incident response, real threat hunting, real malware analysis and knowing what's going on across the industry. I truly think if you work in cybersecurity, you should take a look through this threat intelligence index. And hey, maybe tune into that webinar, get a feel for everything that they're chatting about. Seriously, please link in the video description. And I do wanna showcase, maybe do some demos for other things in the report in other videos, but I hope you thought that was a cool crash course and go check it out. Go read through it. There's a lot to learn.